uh, you were part and parcel of the deputy presidential aspirants debate. Yes. That must have been like uh, a, two, week. a week or two weeks yes. back. Yes. But now when your party leader, uh, when it was his turn, he did not show up. Mm -hmm. I know you, you made a statement on social media, but to Kwapa, able to elezi kwanini ya mean, you, many of your supporters, I'm sure, would have loved to, know. to hear what uh, Professor George had. For, when I was going for the debate, yeah. we wanted to show Kenyans that we are not indisciplined, we are obedient. But already Professor and the party was engaging the organizers. And they said it will be okay when the, if for the presidential, there can be the four of them. So for me, I went to show that Roots Party is very obedient. We respect our supporters. We respect the undecided voters. And I went there on, with, that, with the opportunity and the rules at hand is what I used. But Professor and the Roots Party were already engaging the organizers. It's unfortunate because they never got, us, got back to us or gave us any feedback, despite the letters we wrote. So when it got to his time, he felt we are being discriminated. Because who pays these pollsters? That was the question. And we felt there are only four. So if it's a, a matter of structure, of questioning and timing, it, would have, it, it was possible to have the four of them. But the fact that the organizers never got back to us, we felt discriminated. And that is why even yesterday we attended, we went to the venue just to ask them ben, if letters are not working, then word of mouth, what is your final decision? And we were told that it's not possible. That is why Professor did not go for the debate, he didn't attend the debate. But we respect our supporters and we respect Kenyans. And that is why today we are going to be on the campaign trail around Mavoko area. We'll be talking to Kenyans and telling them that it's not that we, dis we disrespect you. It's only that we felt discriminated by that, the, the structure of the debate. Yes. But you, you, you uh, followed the structure of the debate uh, and it gave you a really good spot on the limelight, I believe. There was so much indication that the presidential would be different. When he, when he communicated the first time on phone. So we were hoping that whatever they had promised us at that time would work out. Unfortunately, it didn't, yes. And uh, you have been part and parcel of that, but do you think it was uh, fair? Is it, does it give contestants a platform to express their sentiments with the voters? Is it something that should be encouraged in this democratic space of Kenya? Uh, this is something I'll tell women. Do you know, we always ask ourselves, where are men ahead of us? Yes. So speaking as a woman, <laughs> I realized you work within the rule set. If you give a man a job, he doesn't ask so much, oh, gee, what are the perks? A man realizes, what can I do with this opportunity? So for me, I, it, I felt it wasn't fair, but the rules were there, I had to follow the rules. And again, as a woman, you know, professor can get off very easily, but if it were me who had not gone, I know the backlash should have been worse. This is a male-dominated society. So I, I worked within the rules, and that is what women we should learn. If you want to compete with men, Men rarely ask, at you, what am I getting, how am I going there? No, you've given a man an opportunity. He'll jump on it and he'll do his best. So for me, I thought like a man, you know, thinking like a man. And I, I took the, I grabbed, the, grabbed opportunity. the opportunity. Yes. And I was happy I did that because I used to think during the campaign trail, many people know me. Imagine people are now, in fact, we went to Garissa and everyone is asking, Mamaya, Kwapi, Mamaya, Ule Mama Tulimona, Kwa Debate. So that's when I realized, guys, they know me. The debate really put me on the limelight. Yes. Good job, though. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you also mentioned something about, you know, um, the media mm -hmm. making use of polls who, whose sponsors we are not aware of. We don't know who they are. Yes. And we don't even know the motivation behind the vote. Mm -hmm. As a Roots Party of Kenya, have you managed to conduct a poll of your own as a party? If not, when do you plan to do it? Uh, or do you even <laughs> plan to do it? Mm -hmm. uh, our current financial uh, challenge is what is affecting us. We've not conducted our own poll, poll opinion, but what we are doing is that we're engaging Kenyans on the ground. And they're really positive, even on social media. Even your show is part of engaging Kenyans. So we know that Kenyans have heard us, and the ones who've not heard about us, we are still engaging them. Our financial constraint is what is limiting us. Because again, to commission a poll, you need a lot of money. So ours is a trade-off between do we do a poll or the little money we have should be used for logistics, fueling the car and get, getting, the, getting to the Kenyans. So, of course, for a pesa, but uh, we believe Kenyans are listening to us. And this is Zile Dakika Zalala Salama. We are trying to tell them, now you've supported us all the way. Please convert your support to votes. We need to see the votes. And many of them are asking us, are you guys assuring us that our votes are safe? And we are assuring Kenyans that we are doing everything possible to have agents in the, the 46,300 polling stations. 
so that the Kenyan can feel confident that even if I vote for roots, there's someone who will be there ku Linda Kura. And most of them, and I go to TV shows, I talk to them and I encourage them. I tell them, Uneza Piga Kura na Linda Kura. They, you, they always engage me on inbox Facebook and they tell me I'm in this polling station, I want to be an agent and they are very supportive. So Mali Tunafika wa Kenya is like they are saying Mungu wa kilio chetu and Roots is the answer. So we are getting massive, massive support. Mm -hmm. Yes.